Welcome back. So next we'll be taking a look at list indexing in Q. And when we talk about list indexing, really just mean we want to extract items from the list. Um, and we're going to do that by passing the list position, aka the index. Um, so let's take a look at that with an example here. So I've created a list called L, five elements long, um, and I'm going to retrieve um, some values from that list by passing it the index. So the zero, first and second elements you see here, I've got 10, 20, 30 returned. And when I pass just zero, I get the first one returned. Um, the point here with the little QB is that you must pass a whole value. So meaning an integer, a long or a short. If you try to use something like a float, it will throw a type error. So if we change this to a float, for example, we get a type error. So just that's something to be aware of. Um, so we, we've used um, the notation like this without any square brackets. We could also add our square brackets in if you wanted to, um, to, to just to be quite explicit about what we're trying to do here. So normally with indexing, you do see it with the square brackets around it, but it's up to the individual preference again, as it is with a lot of things. Um, another thing to note when indexing with lists, um, you might sometimes get this a null return and not understand why. And that basically means you've tried to um, you've chosen an index that is out of bounds. So my list here has only got five elements in. I'm saying, give me the 10th element back um, and I get a null returned um, because it, it doesn't exist. Um, and note that the type of this would be the same type as your input. So for example, I'm getting a long here back. This here is a list of longs. If I did something like symbols and I give it an out of bounds index, um, I get a back tick back. And similarly, this example is showing a list of reels indexing out of bounds and I get 0NE, which is the real null type. Okay, so um, have a quick go at this exercise. We're just looking at the same thing, but looking at a general list rather than a simple list. Um, so when, when we have a general list, the way it determines the type um, will be, it'll just take the first, um, the first type of the element in your general list and it'll give you the null um, returned up that. So have a go with that example and that will just explain that um, in a bit more detail. And then once you're happy with that, we'll move on and look at indexing lists at depth. So to do this, we're going to take a look at matrices in Q. Um, so first of all, how do we create them? So we've got a handy keyword called cut that um, lets us to do that quite nicely. So if we go to our keywords and go to cut, um, you scroll down here to the keyword, you can see it takes two parameters. So the left hand side here is basically the size of the chunks that we want to cut the, the object into. And then the right hand side is our list. Um, so if we did something like, I'll just show a quick example. So if we did chunks of size two, and then we said cut, and then we do a list of one, two, three, four, five, six. What you can see happens is we get a matrix created and it's too long because each element, sorry, um, or each row is too long because I put two here. If I change this to three, you'd see the shape of my matrix changes. Um, so that's what this example is doing. We're just um, using till nine to create our list and then multiplying that by three just to get some bigger values. And then we're doing it, gonna cut the, that by three. And then we're going to index into that matrix um, at the zero width element. So let's see what happens when we do that. So this is what our matrix looks like. So we've got 0, 3, 9, 9, 12, 15, and then 18, 21, 24. And then when I do matrix at the zero width element, I get the first row returned. And that's um, doing without doing anything at depth. We're just doing the top level of the matrix, basically. Now, if we wanted um, the second level, so uh, and we wanted to index at depth, what we basically basically can do is pass a second square bracket and that indexes into this, the, the next level down. So if we run this, we'll see what I mean. So I've gone in, I've now returned this list and this second square bracket is doing, um, giving me the first and second element, which is three and six of the zero with row, which is this row up here. And um, there is a second way to do that syntax. So rather than having to do square brackets twice, we could actually just get rid of the, the second square brackets and put it all inside one and then separate by a semicolon. So these two things are doing the very same thing. Um, and what we're saying is 
just to make sure that you understand that that is not the same as doing something like matrix. Um, so we did zero, one, two. This is indexing at the top level. And then once we've got either two sets of um, brackets or we've got the semicolon, that's a, that should highlight to you that we're indexing at depth into the matrix. So you get different results returned. Okay. Um, so I believe exercises here just to test your understanding on that. So we're asking for you to create a two item list containing the string lists, hello world, and then index at our top level to obtain the string hello. So it should be something like this. And then we're asking you to index at depth. So that'll be more like this option here. So have a go with those. And then once you're happy, we can move on to the final section in this video, which is index elision. So what this really means is where when we intentionally omit or, or leave out an index, what happens? So in the, in the last example, we were explicitly stating that indexes that we won't return. So this here is giving us the whole matrix back, you can see, and then the zero here is going in to um, the zero with element of each um, each row. So for example, I'm getting zero, one, and two will give me the whole matrix back. And then I'm going and passing in zero into each row. So that, that's how I get this, these first three values of um, the each uh, sub-level back. Um, but say, for example, you didn't know the size of your matrix, so you didn't want to pass, you know, in, in here, um, the all the indices um, in your first level, you could actually just leave that completely blank and then pass in um, at, you know, at depth which, which level you want. So you can see the difference between that. So this here is saying actually just do this for every single level um, and then get me the zero for every single level. So if I change that to one, instead of getting the zero with, I'll be getting the first one, which is three, 12 and 21. And then the same with two. I'd get 6, 15, and 21. And you can see again, if I go out of bounds, I'm getting nulls returned. So in that way, you could define a function um, that you could apply to any matrix um, and you wouldn't have to explicitly define um, the, the indexes you know, initially that, you're, that you care about if you're doing it across the entire matrix. Okay, um, so have a go with the final exercise here. Um, so just putting that into practice, retrieving the second, third, second and third items from each list in the matrix variable, and then um, doing the same, but instead of from each list, just do it from the entire matrix variable as a whole. Okay, so have a go at that. And when you're comfortable, I'll see you in the next video.